Today's video is an exciting one, because I'm diving into a project I've been itching to share with you. This is my Kawasaki ZX-6R B1H model. I've been working on it for a while now. I made many of the parts on the bike out of carbon fiber. As the bike gets closer and closer to being completed, it looks like I will have to make a carbon fiber fuel tank for the bike. That will complete the whole look 100%. But, in this video, I'm crafting carbon fiber side bearings for my bike. I made the mold for this project in my last video. Check it out if you're interested in the whole process. The last time, I finished the video with the post curing of the mold. Now, that's where I continue. During the post cure, the mold was slightly deformed and the gap increased in the split line. Trying to fix this problem by drilling a few more holes closer to the bottom of the flange, then tighten it up with the bolts. Looks like the added bolts created a tighter seal. The gap was narrower than it was. Next up, I covered the mold with the three coats of chemical release agent. I'm using a brush to apply the chemical release agent on the mold and it's truly making a difference. The brush allows for a smooth application, ensuring that every nook and cranny of the mold is properly coated. After the release agent dried up, I masked the whole mold with masking tape. I did that in sections. This way, the tape is easier to remove and I don't have to handle it around in such a big pieces. The section of the tape templates will be giving me the size of the prepreg. With the sharpie, I mark the split lines and the edges. Before I cut the prepreg, I have to pull it out of the freezer to ensure it is defrosted. Until the prepreg is defrosting, I transfer the masking tape templates onto the cardboard. The cardboard will give stiffness to the templates. By the time I cut the cardboard templates out, the prepreg was defrosted and ready for cutting and laminating. If you were wondering why is it stored in the freezer, let me tell you why. The prepreg materials, which are composite fibers pre-impregnated with resin, have a fascinating secret behind their storage requirements. This might seem unusual, but there is a beautiful logic to it. The resin in the prepreg is only partially cured so that it remains flexible and workable until the moment of final shaping and curing in the production. When kept cold, this state is preserved, ensuring the material retains its optimal properties and doesn't start curing before it is supposed to. I cut the prepreg into pieces, 
roughly into equal sizes. The first outside layer I'll be doing is a mosaic pattern. With this look, I continue with the same look over the whole bike. I pull off the brown back film of the prepreg, then lay it into the mold and pull off the top blue film as well. Then I continue on laying down the prepreg till I cover up the whole mold. To overcome the rounded bolt hole sections, I punch out a few prepregs with my gasket maker tool. Gently place the rounded prepreg onto the mold, starting at one edge and working my way around. I make sure that it bonds smoothly to the mold surface and follows the contours accurately. This step is crucial for achieving a perfect fit and sharp edges. I start to prepare the next layer of prepreg. I will cut out one more layer of 225g carbon fiber with the help of the templates. Following by the debulking and two more layers of 450g carbon fiber.
I was making sure that each layer was properly aligned and free of wrinkles. The next step is the debulking. For the debulking, I'm using a perforated release film. Perforated release film is a specialized material with tiny holes punched throughout its surface. This film plays a crucial role in the debulking process when used in conjunction with vacuum bagging. It involves removing trapped air from the layers of prepreg material before the final curing process. After laying the prepreg, I place the perforated release film over the top layer. The perforations in the film allow air to escape while still providing a barrier that prevents direct contact with the layer of briefing cloth or vacuum bag. Once the perforated release film was in place, I covered the entire setup with the briefing cloth and the vacuum bag. With seal and tape, I sealed the edges of the bag, connected a vacuum pump to the bag and effectively created a vacuum within the bag. The vacuum will compress the prepreg layers and perforated film, promoting the removal of trapped air through the holes in the film. Let the vacuum run for a specified duration, often between 30 minutes to a couple of hours, depending on the thickness and the type of the prepreg being used. Once the debulking is completed, I gently open the bag and remove the mold from the bag. Continued on with the two more layers of 450 gram prepreg. Between the two layers, I added the side flanges. The small molds are easily bolted on. I laminated also four layers of prepreg into these molds. Two layers of 225 gram and two layers of 450 gram prepreg. In the end, I overlap with the last layer of 416 gram carbon. I use the unperforated release film before curing. The release film keeps the resin where it's needed, ensuring the surface of your prepreg isn't marred or sticking to anything else when it comes out of the mold. Unlike perforated films, which allow excess resin to bleed through, unperforated films keep it contained. The mold is covered with the briefing cloth. Also, when you're pulling a vacuum to cure the prepreg, air needs a way to escape and the briefer cloth provides that pathway. It absorbs excess resin and lets the air move, ensuring a snug fit around your mold. So putting them all together, you've got your prepreg laid up, then an unperforated release film to protect and contain it, and finally, a briefer cloth to help air escape and apply even pressure. It's like a sandwich where each layer has a vital role in making sure your final product turns out just right. I use my oven to cure the pot. If you want to know how to build something like this, please check out my video of this oven.
The curing time began at 60 degrees for 2 hours, ramped up the temperature to 70 degrees for 2 hours, then 120 degrees for 2 hours. At the end of the curing time, switch off the oven and let the part cool in the oven fully. part released without any problems from the mold. I was so happy with it. The surface turned out fairly good. I have some bridging and pinholes on the surface. These surface defects are easily repairable. I slightly jumped the gun and already trimmed the fairing edges. I will have a different video of making the fairing mounting points and adhering to that. Okay. Let's see now what does it look like on the bike. The whole fairing feels a lot more sturdier than the previous plastic. That means it is little more challenging to fit it onto the bike. The pins, bolt holes and mounting points are lining up perfectly. And there you have it folks, the carbon fairing is finally in place and I have to say it fits perfectly, looking every bit as awesome as I had imagined. The work put into crafting this piece was no small feat, from tackling the mold making to meticulously layering the carbon fiber. Each set comes with its own set of challenges, but seeing the final result on my ZX6R makes it all worthwhile. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more projects like this, don't forget to like, subscribe and drop a comment below. Until next time, keep your passion revving and I'll catch you in the next video.